Greetings, Atlings. Welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life. Today we have Project Panthers Taban on the bench. This is following catastrophic failure that occurred where we think the exhaust wheel sheared off the shaft. As you can see, that is not supposed to be happening. And we also had massive play and a lot of oil bleeding uh, evident from the blackness around the center cartridge. So today's episode will just be to take this apart and see whether we can figure out what happened. Actually, what led me to this was um, the signaling feedback during diagnostics that pointed me to the actuator. It had quite some excessive play, so I took it apart and discovered that the motor was sick. Um, that is yet to be repaired. But um, yeah, we shall go through this as well to see whether it's failing in the usual manner and also just to perform a quick service to the motor and see whether we can bring it back to life. So that will sit on the side for now. We shall focus on this guy. We shall attempt to take apart the impeller housing first because that should be easier and then we'll go for the exhaust housing. So it's just a bunch of... Um, 10 and 8 millimeter bolts, but the first step will be to take off this bracket so that we have some flexibility. I'll probably fast forward the video because I don't want to bore you guys with my slow and careful tedious. And our bolt has already decided to go into the impeller housing. Okay. One down, 63,000 more to go. Usually when I'm taking things apart, I like to put the bolts right back where they came from so that A, I don't lose them, and B, it is way less messy. Can't wait to see what happened on the inside. Get to it. Love it out gen gently. Hydraulic fluid really is the magic lube. It has multi multiple uses and it's expensive, but it usually works on a lot of things. So because this is already damaged, we might be hammering a little bit. Just try to shock the housing without causing too much pain. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Okay. So judging from the look of things already, we have a line of soot or oil staining. Um, yeah, that looks like this thing was bleeding for a while because the turbine sits this way on the car. So that's the top side. And based on the angle of this stain, looks like it has been bleeding for a while. So the impeller wheel looks like it has some damage. Oh yeah, it has lots of damage. Oh wait, the securing nut is just coming off by hand. Okay, that's interesting. So let's try, take off that seal. Put that aside. 
There's also some staining on the impeller housing itself. Doesn't seem to be any damage to it. It's looking nice, nice, nice. Put that to the side. Let's try work on the exhaust housing now. It should be at 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter bolts. Sometimes they tend to bite and my impact can't get in there. So we need to use a bit of brute force with some shocking. To be all right so let's just let it sit for a few minutes maybe not even minutes just a few moments and I'll be back so what's caught my interest is that this this impeller nut is just it's coming off by hand. I didn't I didn't undo it before the video. So this is interesting. Let's take that out, shall we? Carefully put it down. Yeah, this thing was definitely bleeding. Took a hit. That's for sure. Let's attempt to remove the exhaust housing without killing it. Some shock to the housing. Hopefully we should let go. Let's try that again. Gentle love tops. Oh, this is lovely. It came right off. Okay. So let's have a closer look at this. So this arm here, this actuator arm you see, is the one that's driven by this guy. And this is electronically managed by the engine control. So that variable vane system is what controls uh, these little buggers in here, these guys. So typically this is what manages your boost for lack of a better term. I don't want to mess my hands but I have to. So, let's just see if we can get this out without drama. Okay, it goes down. Oh, would you look at that? Look at that. It basically killed itself it ate itself up completely 
Oh, this was bad. This was bad. Real bad, Michael Jackson. This was so bad. So, I don't know if you can see on the video, but there are these arms, these arms are attached to little veins in there. So let's see that. So when the arms rock back and forth, it, it manages how much airflow goes into the turbine wheel. So that's actually how the variable vein system works. So each of these has has a hinge and is able to swivel around so the ring this this ring basically attaches to all of them and then it's controlled by the swing arm on this side this guy which is then controlled electronically by that guy so I think we have our answer this was catastrophic failure extreme catastrophic failure the shaft just seems to have sheared right has a fair amount of play yeah so this guy seems to have died the veins feel all right but they are pretty sticky okay, that, that's a good one sticky not so bad Sticky, sticky, not so bad, not so bad, sticky, sticky, yeah, so most of them seem to have also had a better, better day. Okay, I think that's it, that's pretty much it, that's, that's the autopsy. So maybe we just review the cartridge a little more, this was definitely oil leaks manifesting here maybe we should take this off and see what we get yeah but for sure catastrophic failure yeah okay well there is your om642 turbine and everything that makes it work so for now I think we shall just call it a day the impeller housing and the exhaust housing are still in fair shape those can be reused should we get another cartridge but as for the cartridge itself maybe it's also not so bad it can possibly still be put to use if it was to be rebuilt so we'll wait and see what we can do with it and on that bombshell, this one ends here. Peace.